I'll begin. My name is Lyle Sensenbrenner. I'm a retired physician scientist living in Salisbury. I spent most of my professional life at the Johns Hopkins University uh, in the School of Medicine doing research uh, in the laboratory with adult stem cells obtained from the bone marrow and peripheral blood of, of uh, adults as well as from the discarded cord blood and uh, placenta of newborns. <coughs> I'm here to ask uh, that you do not support House Bill 1 at the present time. <clears throat> and I um, do that uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I spent uh, several years on panels at the National Institutes of Health which reviewed uh, research proposals, um, uh, 17 years in all. And uh, I'm still serving on some oversight committees, two of them at the National Institutes of Health. Uh, this bill uh, is set up to have a commission and a committee, both of which will uh, be involved in the evaluation and administering the funds for any research proposals. Uh, as you're all aware, we've recently had a very uh, sad incident in the Far East in which uh, an investigator in stem cell research fabricated all of his data. He was able to convince the most uh, prestigious scientific journals in the world to publish his results and uh, these have now all had to be retracted and it was total fabrication. I do not see anything in the bill which guarantees a strong oversight of any of the funds which you give. And I think that's going to be absolutely essential. Um, the federal government, in their uh, review of uh, studies in humans, uh, frequently sees to it that there is an oversight committee appointed who looks constantly at what data is being collected, how it's being collected, whether it is honestly uh, reported or not. I think we've also seen recently one of the drug companies in their uh, studies uh, which did not have the proper oversight, did not publish uh, negative data about uh, some of their drugs, and now they are suffering for it rather severely uh, in the courts of the United States with uh, many uh, suits against them. I think this bill needs, uh, I think any time you get into the uh, business of funding medical research, there should be adequate oversight uh, in order to protect the populace and uh, to uh, get the validity of the data that's uh, been presented. <clears throat> uh, the more important uh, ru uh, reason that I am opposed to this is that I think that despite all of the um, talk about the help which maybe embryonic stem cells can do and they, and they may be able to. At the present time we've only seen good results with the adult stem cells, number one. Number two, I think that uh, uh, many of us feel very strongly that uh, the fertilized ovum and is a living human being. Uh, and whether it's been frozen away for uh, a month or a year or even up to nine years, we see in these so-called snowflake children that they are still capable of growing and developing into perfectly normal, uh, healthy uh, individuals. And uh, I th feel very strongly that it would be morally wrong to uh, destroy uh, living human embryos to help other sick people. Uh, as great as that may sound to uh, help other sick people, I can't see being doing it at the uh, destruction of living human embryos. And uh, I am also the uh, executive director of an organization uh, called uh, the Maryland uh, Coalition for uh, Ethical uh, Research, and we feel very strongly that uh, these embryos should not be destroyed. And I'd like to leave you with just one more thought, and that is a statement that uh, Madam Chiang Kai-shek made many years ago when she was chastising the British government 
for recognizing the communist regime in China. She said, that which is morally wrong 